hey girls welcome or welcome back to my youtube channel if you're not already don't forget to hit subscribe because i do post weekly nail videos if you're already subscribed thank you so much for coming back to my nail content in today's video i'm going to be doing a really cute fall themed manicure using dip powder i have already prepped my natural nails applied some jelly tips which i have cut down the length of and now i'm all ready to apply my dip powder nails the main items I'm going to be using for this manicure are the Dip Powder Colors 455, which is Pretzel Park, the Dip Powder Color 23, which is called Nude, the Dip Powder Color Number 20, which is Beige Pink, the Color 1388, and this is Hemlock Ochre, and the Color DD576, which is Vine Ivory. To apply the dip powder to my nails, I'm going to be using the Dip Base, which is Number 2, and I'll be using the activator, which is number three. As I said, I have already prepped my nails how I want for my manicure. If you do want your nails to last the longest amount of time, make sure to follow a very good nail prep routine. I'm going to go ahead and start the dip powder application by applying the dip base to the entire nail. You do not want to get this product on your skin, otherwise you're going to have the dip powder stick to your skin as well. So definitely try to avoid your cuticle and sidewall areas. I'm then going to immediately dip the nail at a 45 degree angle into the dip powder. I'm then going to tap away all of the excess dip powder and that is the first layer of dip powder. I'm going to be repeating that same step, dipping the index and thumbnail into the color pretzel bark. I am going to be applying rhinestones around the cuticle area of these nails, so I'm personally not very worried about the cuticle line being perfect during my application. If you do want the cuticle line to be perfect after you dip the nail, immediately after you tap away the excess dip powder, you can take a wooden cuticle pusher and use the pointy side to draw a line around your cuticle area and that will smooth out the cuticle line and make it as perfect as you can get it. Of course, you can switch out the dip powder colors to use whatever colors that you like. Personally, I think that these dip powder colors go very well together. It gives a very beautiful look for fall and the holidays. Once all of the nails have been dipped, I'm then going to take the Mermaid Tail Fluffy Nail Brush. This one is absolutely beautiful. I'm going to be using this to dust away all of the excess dip powder from those three nails. You do want to make sure to do this step very well to prevent contaminating your dip base. It can also cause the brush to harden up and you definitely do not want that to happen. So make sure to dust your nails very well. I'm then going to be doing a second layer of dip powder on those three nails. You can do as many or as few dip powder layers as you like. Personally, I would recommend to do at least two layers of dip powder. I did not do more than two layers because the jelly tips do have a lot of strength to them and I don't want the nails to be too bulky, so I only did two layers of dip powder color. I did forget to mention, but everything I will be using is linked down below in the description. So if you are interested to purchase any of these items, I will link it down below along with my discount code. After those layers of dip powder are dry, I'm going to go back with my Mermaid Tail Fluffy Nail Brush and I'm going to be dusting away all of the excess dip powder again. After I've done this step, I'm going to go ahead and move on to the next nail. For the marble nails, I am going to be using the French Tip Dip Powder Tray. Mine is a little bit stained from a previous color, but this is not going to affect the application. 
For the dip powder marble, I'm going to be using the color Vine Ivory, Hemlock Ochre, and the Nude Dip Powder. I'm going to be taking these three colors and I'm going to pour some into the dip powder tray. I am going to start with the white dip powder. I do want this color in the marble, but I don't want it to be overpowering. So I'm going to place that color at the bottom. I'm then going to take the cuticle pusher and I'm going to scoop up the nude dip powder and I'm going to sprinkle this in random places on the white dip powder. I'm going to tap that onto the table to level it out. I'm then picking up the glitter dip powder and I'm going to sprinkle this in between those two colors. I'm then going to take a small wooden cuticle pusher and I'm going to gently marble those colors together. When doing this step, you do not want to over marble and you also do not want to push those top colors down into the dip powder. You do want everything to stay level on the surface of the dip powder. Once you have it marbled, you are going to tap it a few times down on the table to even out the dip powder. I am doing a French tip dip powder marble nail and for the base color, I'm using the color 20, which is beige pink. I did actually mess up this nail, but I wanted to include it just to show you what not to do when doing a French tip marble nail. I started the French tip nail by applying the dip base to the entire nail. I then started to dip the nail into the dip powder tray as you normally would for a French tip nail. This is the step that did not end up working out. You cannot pick up the marble design by dipping the nail as I am. So this is why the nail ended up not working out with this method for the French tip marble nail. I then took the cuticle pusher and poured the dip powder over the rest of the nail. I also took way too long to do the French tip nail so some of the dip powder did not stick. I did end up filing all of this off but I just wanted to include this step to show you what not to do. I did decide to go ahead and move on to the middle fingernail, so I'm going back with the French tip tray and I'm going to be adding a little bit more of the nude dip powder color. As I seen with the first attempt, I noticed that this marble needed some dark color to it, so I'm taking the color pretzel bark and I'm going to be sprinkling a little bit of this color in random places with the cuticle pusher and this is going to give the marble a little bit of depth. And of course, I'm going to be adding a little bit more of the glitter dip powder. I'm then going to take the wooden cuticle pusher again and I'm going to gently marble those colors together and then tap the tray on the table to level it out. For the middle fingernail, I'm going to be doing a solid marble nail. So I'm starting by taking the dip base, which is number two, and I'm going to apply this onto the entire nail, avoiding the cuticle and sidewall areas of the nail. I'm going to turn the nail upside down and push it face down directly into the dip powder marble. You do want to make sure to cover all areas of the nail when you push it into the powder. Tap away the excess and here's what the nail looks like. After that layer is dry, I'm going to dust away all of the excess dip powder. I am going to be doing a second layer of the dip powder marble. Before I do the second layer, I am going to fix the marble dip powder by adding a little bit more of pretzel bark and the glitter dip powder. Because I added more dip powder, I'm going to take the wooden cuticle pusher and gently swirl around the colors. For the second layer of dip powder, I'm going to be repeating the exact same step that I did for the first layer of the dip powder marble. I have seen people recommend to do a solid layer of light color dip powder or white and then do the layer of dip powder marble. This will make the colors pop a little bit more. Personally, I did want to add a lot of depth to the nail, so I only did two layers of the dip powder marble. For the ring fingernail, which is the French tip marble nail design, the best way that I could think to apply this to the nail is going to be to do a reverse French tip nail. If you are familiar with acrylic application, you will know the method that I'm using for this French tip nail. I am only applying the dip base to where I want the base color of the nail. This is going to be creating my smile line. Right after applying the dip base, I'm going to dip this into the beige pink. I'm going to tap away the excess dip powder and then I'm going to brush away the excess dip powder and I'm going to be repeating this two more times. 
When doing the second and third layer of dip powder, I am only applying the dip powder to the same area that I've previously done. Doing this is going to build up that area of color and allow me to have something to file to get the smile line like I want. After those layers are dry, I'm going in with my activator and I'm going to apply this very generously to the layers I've just done. This is going to harden those layers and allow me to file it into shape. I'm then going to take this small hand file from the 12 piece manicure buffer kit and I'm going to be filing the smile line into shape. By looking from the side, you can see that the dip powder layer is slanted. You do not want this when applying the French tip color. You do want the base of the nail to have a really sharp ledge. This is going to give you a really clean French tip nail. So I'm just taking the hand file and I'm placing this at the smile line of the nail and I'm just going to be filing this into the perfect shape. I really love a deep French tip nail, which just means that the smile line of the French tip nail is very curvy. Some people do like their French tips a little bit straighter than this. This is completely up to you and you can do it how you like. To shape my French tip nails, I like to think of shaping a short almond nail and I think this gives me the perfect smile line for the French tip that I'm going for. Here's what the nail looks like after I file the base color of the French tip nail. As you can see, there is a really good ledge and this is going to give me a really good French tip nail. To apply the marble French tip, I'm going to take my cuticle pusher and the four dip powder colors to do the dip powder marble. I am going to be using the dip base, which is number two. I'm going to take the base and I'm going to apply this to only the tip of the French tip nail. I did get a little bit of this on my skin, but I just quickly wiped it away before I poured the dip powder over top of the nail. I then took the cuticle pusher and I'm going to pick up different colors of the dip powder and I'm going to sprinkle this over top of the wet base. I am going to be repeating this using the other three dip powder colors. I will be very honest and tell you that this did not work for me. Oh my god. No! God! Please, no! No! I have seen other people be able to marble their dip powder colors like this, but when I tried it, it just did not work for me. So for the second layer of dip powder marble for this nail, I did the same method that I did for the middle finger nail, and it turned out really good. Here I have the fringe tip tray ready, and I'm going to be doing the same step, so I'm only applying the dip base to the tip area of the French tip nail. I did again get some of this on my skin, so I'm just going to wipe it away before I dip the nail. I am going to be dipping the tip of the nail as I did the other marble nail. And here's how the French tip looks. I do really love how this French tip ended up looking. I think this is absolutely gorgeous. I can't wait to do this with more dip powder colors. I did decide to do one more layer on the tip of the nail just to make sure that it evens out with the base color of the French tip nail. Once those layers of dip powder are dry, I'm going back with my activator, which is number three, and I'm going to apply this very generously to the two middle nails. To file the nails, I am going to be using the Bellavina Professional Portable E-File. I am going to be using this with the smooth top medium grit drill bit to smooth out the surface of the nails. You can use a hand file, but personally, I think an e-file is much quicker. I am trying a new method of using the e-file, so for the speed, I am using 15,000 RPMs. This is rather high for me. I typically use a really low speed when filing with an e-file, but I wanted to try something new, and I do think this method is really nice. To shape the nails, I am very lightly running the drill bit over the surface of the nail. 
because of the high speed that I'm using, I do not have to put any pressure at all on the drill bit, otherwise I would be removing way too much product. Because the powder goes on so smoothly, you really don't need to do that much filing to the nails. Personally, I just did not feel like using a hand file or a buffer to smooth out the surface of my nails today, so I went ahead and used my e-file. Here's what the nails look like after they've all been filed and shaped. I'm then going to take a lint-free wipe with some alcohol and remove all of the dust from the nails. For the middle fingernail, I am going to be doing some foil, so I'm going to take the base coat gel from one of the poly gel kits. I'm also going to be using some gold leaf foil and the tweezers from the poly gel kit. I'm going to start by applying a layer of the base coat gel to the entire nail. I'm going to take the tweezers and pick up a big chunk of the gold foil and I'm going to be placing this at the cuticle area of the nail. I'm going to pick up a second big chunk of the gold foil and I'm going to place this at the free edge of the nail diagonally across from the other piece. I am going to be pushing this down very well to avoid having any bumps in the nail. I'm then going to cure that for one minute. For the ring fingernail, I'm taking the gold gel art liner from the gel art liner collection. This is number 12. This color is absolutely stunning. One of my favorite colors in that whole gel art liner collection. So I'm going to be using this to outline the French tip nail. I did make sure not to have too much of the polish on the brush because I do want this line to be rather thin. The only thing I'm doing is just outlining that smile line. Doing this is really good if you're not able to get a really crisp smile line. I do think that the smile line that I created was very nice and clean, but I just added this for the small detail to match the other nail. I'm then going to cure that for one minute. I'm then going to take the 12 piece rhinestones and shape set and I'm going to be applying this with the top coat from one of the poly gel kits and of course I'm going to be using those tweezers. I'm going to be taking these silver rhinestones and I'm going to be applying them to the cuticle area of the brown nails. I'm going to start by applying the gel top coat to the entire nail. Before I cure that under the nail lamp, I'm going to take the tweezers and pick up one of the big silver rhinestones and I'm going to place this in the center at the cuticle area of the nail. I'm then going to take three smaller rhinestones and I'm going to be placing this on the right and left side of that center rhinestone. I'm also going to be taking the smallest gold caviar beads and I'm going to be placing these in between the rhinestones. I also placed these on the other side of the nail as well and I repeated that same rhinestone placement to the pinky and thumbnail. I did cure those nails for one minute. I'm now going to go ahead and apply the gel top coat to the middle two nails. I do like to finish off my dip powder manicures with a gel top coat. If you don't like gel, you can use the dip top coats that are included in the dip liquid kit. I personally just love the look and finish that gel gives, so this is why I am using gel to finish off my manicures. After the top coat has been applied, I am going to cure that for one minute. After all of the nails are cured, I'm going to take the cuticle oil, which is number 6, and I'm going to be applying this to all of the cuticles. It is really important to rehydrate your skin after every single manicure. And here are the nails! I think this set came out so cute, I love them. Let me know what you think down below in the comments. Make sure to give this video a big thumbs up. If you're not already, don't forget to hit subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye!